okay, you're, you're consenting to be recorded here. Um, um, let me, let me hold, let me ask, hold on, okay. Mm -hmm. Any, any, any initial questions or thoughts? Um, we can kind of walk through the training objectives for today. I'm gonna hit that slide there. Wilson. Um, so, so what we want to do today, what we want to take away um, is really provide a, a deep project overview of kind of what we're doing, um, answer any questions about the project um, from the project leaders that are here today, um, describe how project services were allocated to each chapter, um, review re chapter reporting status and services use usage, and then discuss ways to improve service delivery. So we're gonna target those five objectives, uh, share some information, uh, both in video and on a presentation, and then um, have room for questions. And we have a question in the, ch uh, we can take questions orally, or you can type them in the chat like Paula just did there. Um, so, so please don't hesitate to ask questions. Um, I'm going to walk through kind of our, our general agenda for the day. If you want to hit this slide there. So uh, we're going to start out um, reviewing the, the, the training videos. Um, we're going to sit through and watch them, um, answer any questions about them. Um, we're going to go into, in the, which is something that I will lead. We're going to go into outreach and reporting material re review which I'll kind of walk through and point out on our, our website. Uh, Mr. David Harvey will walk through project services allocation. Uh, Mr. Wilson Yee will walk through chapter and service use reporting and chapter support resources. Um, I'll, I'll come back with chapter recommendations and then chapter comments and some feedback and discussion um, around content shared, questions, thoughts, and then we'll end with a, a virtual tour of the Navo Safe Water Daughter site led by Wilson. Um, and please note that any CHRs requiring a record of attendance, um, please email Tracy Hackett at ihs.gov. That's tracy.hackett at ihs.gov. Um, any thoughts? It looks like, um, can we email Paula the, the PowerPoint? I had a question. We can do that. Um, I think uh, if we if we if there's a central email or if, if individuals want um, the presentation email, we can absolutely do that. Yeah, and we'll make it available on the NavajoSafeWater.org website as well. Thank you. Um, any from. Um, any, anyone that joined today, any questions, thoughts before we dive in? It's like, um, people are still logging in, so we'll maybe take a minute. And, um, And if we could, if we could ask everyone to please, uh, mute, unless you're answering questions, uh, please mute your line. Um, Good morning. Good morning. This is Lenora Shirley calling in from Ganado Chapter. Morning, Lenora. <laughs> So we're gonna walk in, we're gonna walk into these videos. Um, and, and the first one we're gonna show is the, is the water refresher training for chapter officials. Uh, and this, will, this video will be in English. And this, tra this training video provides a refresher of the in-person training uh, previously provided for chapter staff and community health workers. It covers all the basic information on the beneficial use agreements 
um, storage container, dis container distribution, chlorine tablet use, and the chapter reporting requirements. And it's about 15 minutes long. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the chapter training refresher video that is meant for chapter officials and CHRs who maintain the water points and provide information about the program to community members. Today, we're going to cover the goal of the program and why it's so important that people have access to safe drinking water. We're also going to go over the chapter water allowances and how those were calculated. And then we're going to cover the blue five gallon storage containers and the chlorine disinfection tablets that were provided to some of the chapters. We're also going to cover chapter responsibilities and provide additional resources. The Navajo Nation has an estimated 37,000 people without water, or about 20% of the population. Our goal is to increase access to safe drinking water for residents of homes with no piped water during the COVID-19 public health emergency. This includes free water, water storage containers, and disinfection tablets, if needed, to keep the water safe for human consumption in the home. Obtaining drinking water from sources supplied by a public water system that is regulated by the Navajo EPA helps ensure that the water is safe for you and your family. We have also worked to provide the chapters with educational materials and training, just like this one, about safe water. As part of the project, IHS is paying the water fees for people who live in homes without piped water. To help increase access to drinking water, over 50 new water points, called Transitional Water Points, or TWPs, have been installed as part of this project. At TWPs, IHS is paying the water bill in full every month until the maximum two-year water allowance is reached, or until the COVID-19 public health emergency is declared over, whichever is sooner. If you aren't sure about your chapter's water allowance, you can refer to your Beneficial Use Agreement, or BUA, which I'll talk about more in a second. IHS will stop paying the water fees once the public health emergency is over or when you reach your maximum water allowance. After that, it's up to the chapter if they want to continue to operate the TWP at their own cost or close it. For a PWP, it's a little bit different. IHS is going to pay the monthly allowance that's shown on the BUA and it's going to show up as a credit on your account each month for two years or until the public health emergency is over, whichever is sooner. Here's a copy of one of the beneficial use agreements for the water collection project, one of the BUAs. The chapter should have been provided a copy of each BUA for their reference. So here on the top line on the right, you can see that's where your monthly water allowance is going to be. Right below that is the two year. So you can refer to this and see how much water IHS is going to pay for monthly and then also the maximum. This was calculated based on the number of homes without piped water in your community. So each chapter is going to be different. Chapters with more homes are going to have a higher water allowance. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the items that were provided at each water point. That includes the hand sanitizer in the stand, a hose if you are at a TWP, and some chains and locks for security. Several signs were also installed, which you can see in this photo. The first sign talks about COVID-19 precautions and things that people should do to keep safe while they're filling their water containers. There is also a sign letting people know they can obtain their five gallon storage container at the chapter. And at some chapters, there is also a sign telling people they can ask for a disinfection tablet to be added to their container. It's also important to make sure everyone is following all the COVID-19 precautions while they're collecting their water or filling their water storage containers. This includes practicing safe physical distancing by keeping six feet away, wearing masks, and using the hand sanitizer provided. The signs that were installed will have this information on them as well. A majority of chapters will have received those blue five gallon storage containers. If you're not sure how many you received, you can refer to your BUA. In that top box on the right, it lists the IHS number of homes without piped water. We use this number to calculate the number of storage containers that we provided to you. That number can be found in the second box. This should match the number of storage containers that you received. And remember, it's one container per person. So if a home has five people, you can provide them five storage containers. When you hand out the storage containers to your community members, you wanna go over a few things about proper storage. 
So first, you want to tell them to store the container off the ground away from dirt and dust and make sure that pets can't contaminate the water somehow. You also want to tell them that they should only be using it for water. Don't fill it with other types of liquids or use it for agricultural purposes or anything else. It should only be used for drinking water and cooking water. Finally, you want to have them clean and sanitize it before they return to the water point to refill it. And we'll go over that next. Here's a demonstration of how to sanitize the blue storage container. First, you want to measure four teaspoons of bleach with one gallon of water. Pour that into your storage container. We've already added some water into our storage container, so you can see here she's just adding the four teaspoons of bleach. Make sure that people are using regular unscented bleach. Any scented bleaches will not properly clean and sanitize the container. Next, put the spigot back on and shake the container around, making sure that all of the inside parts get wet from the bleach solution. Then let it sit for 30 seconds. Once the 30 seconds is up, you can dump the water out into the sink and let the container air dry. And that's it. You have just sanitized your container. You want to encourage people to clean and sanitize their container before coming to refill it at the water point. Here's a handout that you can provide along with the blue storage containers to your community members. And it covers the importance of getting your drinking and cooking water from a regulated source that's tested and that we know is safe to drink. This handout also refers to the NavajoSafeWater.org website, which has a ton of good resources. On the back, there are sanitizing and cleaning instructions on how to use the bleach solution to clean the storage container. You can find this handout on the NavajoSafeWater.org website. In addition to the blue storage containers, some chapters were also provided the chlorine disinfection tablets based on the chlorine test results from that water point. You can see some of the tablets in this photo. Chlorine kills the bacteria and viruses in water that could make you sick. If the chapter had a lower chlorine level, we recommend adding the chlorine tablets to the blue storage containers. The purpose of the tablet is to extend the time that chlorine is in the water and will prevent the growth of bacteria and viruses while it's being stored at that person's home. If you aren't sure if your chapter needed the disinfection tablets, you can go back to the BUA here and right here is where it will tell you if disinfection tablets were required based on our chlorine tests that we conducted. It'll also tell you what your one year supply was and the number of tablets that we provided. When a person comes to refill their blue five gallon storage containers, someone from the chapter can add one chlorine tablet to the container. After that, tell the person to wait 30 minutes for the tablet to dissolve and then they can use it for cooking and drinking. Anytime a person to, comes to refill their blue five gallon storage container, you can add a chlorine tablet. You only want to add the chlorine tablets to the blue five gallon storage containers. Any other containers might be different sizes or made of different materials that we didn't test. So the chlorine might not work the way it's supposed to. The blue containers were tested and we know that the chlorine level is safe. Don't hand out any extra tablets. Keep them stored safely at the chapter house. Here's a handout that provides some information about the water disinfection tablets, including the purpose and how to use them. First, you want to fill the blue five gallon container with water. Second, the chapter official or someone from the chapter will place one of the tablets into the container. Tell the person they should wait 30 minutes before using the water to make sure the tablet completely dissolves. After that, they can use it for drinking, cooking and hand washing. Once the water has been in the container for about a week, they should dump anything that's left sanitize and clean the container, and then bring it back to be refilled. The back of the handout also goes through some frequently asked questions about chlorine, like what are the health benefits of adding chlorine to the water? If someone asks this question, you can refer them to this handout and let them know that chlorine has been proven to reduce bacteria and viruses that can make you sick. That's why we're adding the chlorine tablet to keep your family healthy and prevent diseases. I won't go over the rest of the questions during this video, but if you'd like more information, please refer to the more detailed disinfection tablet video on the website. One more thing, if someone really does not want a chlorine tablet, you don't have to give it to them. It's not required, but it is highly recommended. So you can encourage them to take a tablet, but if they are against it, you don't have to force it. And again, don't hand out any extra tablets, only put them directly into the container when people are coming to refill them. Another important piece I want to cover are the reporting logs. So when you distribute the five gallon containers to your community members, we ask that you record their names, 
their address or a rough description of the location of their home, how many containers you gave them, how many chlorine tablets you gave them, and the date. You don't have to return this form to us. This is more for your records so you know which homes receive the five gallon containers and the homes that don't have piped water. You could also provide this information to your local IHS engineers to help fund future projects to get piped water to these. One log that we do ask you return to us is the monthly reporting form. So each month you should fill out this log with the number of containers provided that month, the number of disinfection tablets provided that month, the number of broken or defective containers and defective spigots that need to be replaced under the warranty. And this form should be submitted every month and we're asking that you do it by the fifth of the month so we can start compiling all the data from the different chapters. You can submit it to this email address right there which is ihsnavajosafewater at ihs.gov. You can also use the Navajo Safe Water website to report your monthly activities for the chapter. So in order to do this, you just go to navajosafewater.org and that will bring up this website. So once it loads, you can scroll down a little bit, you'll see all of these tabs. So go ahead and click the additional resources tab, which is the last option. Then you have to scroll up just a little bit in order to see this. And it says for chapter use only, report monthly distribution activities. And you can click on this hyperlink. That's going to bring you to the survey and click open in browser. And then the questions will pop up. So at the top here, you'll see uh, the purpose and it's just to submit your monthly safe water collection and storage distribution activities for the storage containers and the disinfection tablets. And we're asking that you submit it by the fifth of the month. Um, and that way we can start looking at all the data from the different chapters. If you have any problems with the website, you can go to IHS, you can email IHS Navajo Safe Water at IHS.gov. So let's start filling out the form. So just click this arrow right here and that will bring a drop down that goes through just the basic information like the submittal date. So let's say it's January and I'm reporting for my December activities. So it's Monday, January 4th, the time is seven o'clock and I am reporting for the month of December. So I'll go ahead and click that in 2020. Uh, then it, you can just type in your name here, the name of the person submitting, the contact info, the contact phone number, and email address. So you just go ahead and fill in that information. Scroll down a little more, and this is where you select your chapter. So I'm going to say I'm through since they helped me make some of this video. On the T, that will bring up all of the chapters that begin with the letter T. Here I'm selecting through. And once I continue to scroll down, it does say that there is a TWP, a new transitional water point, and that is correct. So on to the reporting part, go ahead and click that drop down. And it says here, if you have not distributed anything, you can just enter a zero. So the number of water containers distributed during December, let's say they submitted 10 or distributed 10. Water disinfection tablets, let's say they distributed 15. Number of water containers returned for warranty, let's say we had two defective containers and the number of spigots returned, let's say we had three detective, defective spigots. And then here is a place where we can upload pictures of any of the broken containers or broken spigots uh, for the warranty. So you can uh, upload them here either by taking a photo or uploading it from your computer. And then the last part is just any general comments that you have here in this top box or any issues or concerns, you can type them. After that, you can just click the submit button and that will submit your monthly log. And that's it. I've mentioned the Navajo Safe Water website throughout this video, and it's a great resource if you're looking for more information. It has videos from President Nez, Navajo translations, and an interactive map of all the water points. You can look up your chapter and see the operating hours of the water point and also some pictures of the site. If you notice the hours or information is wrong on the website, you can submit changes there too. In the additional resources tab, there are handouts I talked about and the more detailed training videos. They provide additional information on the blue storage containers and what information to pass along to your community members. They also cover the disinfection tablets, 
the reporting requirements, and the beneficial use agreements. If you have any questions or concerns, you can email IHS Navajo Safe Water at IHS.gov. You can also contact your local IHS Office of Environmental Health and Engineering, whose contact information is on the screen. We hope this video helped review some important parts of the project. Thank you. Thank you. What a nice video. Um, before we, we seg into our second video of the day, I wanted to um, ask if anybody had any questions. And you're, you're free to say them aloud or type them in the chat. Um, questions about any of the content or information shared in, in the WaterPoint refresher training uh, for chapter officials video. Well, that's a pretty comprehensive video. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Can you hear yes. me? Yes, oh, yes. Listen, um, my name can, my name is Sandy Ramon, and I'm with um, Southwest Research and Information Center. Um, I just have one comment, maybe. Uh, uh, OK, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Hello? OK. Uh, my question is in reference to um, disinfected tablets. I, I I'm just I'm just thinking um, maybe uh, some some participants are afraid of taking that tablets and rinsing them in their jugs, their five gallon jugs, due to the fact is that um, they want to know they would want to know what the ingredient is and what will it do to their health. I mean that's. I, I would want to know that too, if I have an underlying medical condition. Maybe that's something that needs to be brought up or um, put in the video to say that saying that it's not harmful. It's just a disinfected. I think there needs to be more explanation, be specific about it. Yeah, thank you. This, this is like a this is Captain David Harvey with the Indian Health Service. There will be some more information upcoming uh, that I will uh, provide. And I, I appreciate uh, additional feedback on the content that I provide later uh, to, so that we can uh, strengthen it if it's still deficient. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Sandy. Yeah, we'll, we'll, um, we have more information to share uh, later in the presentation. Um, but we, we appreciate the feedback and we'll, we'll have uh, more time to and to discuss how it's how the best way to share this information. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Thank you. When we have a question in the chat from uh, Lee Yazi, uh, where where can we get the water containers from? That's the chapter. You can go right to the chapter that uh, you're you're uh, located in, and the chapter should uh, should have the water containers there. Um, They've been all distributed from uh, the, to the chapters, uh, and the, the, the supplies are there. If there's questions about, um, you know, who at the chapter resigned for those, uh, you can email Navajo Safe Water at nndcd.org, and uh, we can get um, a copy of the beneficial use agreement that shows who signed for that at the chapter. So thank you, Lee. Other questions, thoughts? Um, so we can we can move forward to our second video, which um, we're going to share in Navajo, and it's how to use the transitional water points. And this is an introduction to using transitional water points to access water safely um, during the COVID nineteen pandemic. So this is a shorter one, a couple minutes. Quagge, <laughs> 
data pena ki hot has zena hallo ejo has ta ke this is ki edo hot a e de yo ke ayes de ni ke de ki e ya te ash hode ye go ash hode besalla ne hanne be ke da ast ke to le hoinde ne hizay to ne hichi be ke ast ke to le jo ay kho age en jno be otla ne hichi to ne hinni be ke ast ke hot a kho no aj aro e te chuj do e so e se de da shonde ne hilla kha do gis e kho age a bel khaz a sto alla khana gis ki e de e chuj do e Ado e tobi do hal de ke e hold this ne e chuj do ski Ado e tobi hal de ke chuj do ski so e ya ado at at abi do se ke e do ta da ne akho akho do ayut ab kha de da so le so e hot au en jona do ne jon ne ke ne hit se ma has ke ke ban sa ke so e bin da shi e hot au be has ani so be so so akho e be ata apa no sen do ne so so Thank you. What a what a beautiful video. Um, does anybody have any questions or thoughts um, about the about the usage of traditional transitional water points video and how to access water safely? Um, one one question that popped in the chat from Charmaine. Um, all, all of the videos will be available on the NavajoSafeWater.org site uh, for for use and for uh, further training. Good morning, Current tense. They're, they're currently available. Not, not even, not, not even will be. They're currently there. <laughs> <laughs> they're there right now. Right, right now. Yeah. <laughs> we're on, yeah, Thank we're you. on the site. Uh, good morning, Cheryl, and uh, good morning, Tanya. Thank you. Yes, a beautiful video. Other questions or thoughts before we sag into, into some of the, the content? Well, yeah, uh, uh, this is uh, Chris Shuey. I'm, uh, I'm part of the uh, University of New Mexico team, Southwest Research and Information Center in the Navajo Birth Cohort st <clears throat> study. And there are several <clears throat> folks from our, our group on the, on, on the training today. Uh, appreciate them coming out. I, uh, I, I, I wanted to, to know based on the video that we just saw. So people can come in to a transitional water point. They can fill up the blue bucket and that's the bucket that may get a uh, tablet uh, added by the chapter staff. They can, it appears that they can also fill up other receptacles, but those are, those would not be eligible to put the tablets in. Is that correct? Yeah, the tablet distribution is, is primarily fit for the five gallon container because the tablet is sized specifically for that volume of water. And so, yeah, that's that's correct. The the, uh, the tablets or the chapters have been instructed to only put the tablets into the blue containers. Uh, but water haulers are not uh, constrained over the number of receptacles they can bring to the TWP to put water in. That's correct. We've got that all covered in some slides that are coming up right right now. We're going to go over those key messages. I'll go see. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chris. Uh, great questions. Yeah, everybody's uh, way ahead of us. Um, we're going to, if unless there's any other questions or comments, we're going to sag into uh, onto the website that we'll get a, 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 a fuller look at later. But just to show some of our uh, materials that are available to you to use and download and share. Um, we want to go to the, the actual site. Um, there's, so, yeah, there we go. Um, so on the NavajoSafeWater.org website, um, a, a little, a little further down, uh, 
below the video. So this, this is a big, uh, big website with each of the videos is, is hosted and stored here that you can peruse and share and use for training purposes. Um, and we, there, there we go. So we get to uh, some uh, materials that can be downloaded and shared. And these are informational um, flyers and you can click on the link there and the, the top, the, these ones are um, the safe drinking water is at your chapter uh, produced by the Navajo Nation Division of Community Development and the Navajo Nation EPA. And this, this document describes the resources available and benefits of their use to the Navajo Nation residents living in homes with no piped water under the water access mission. Um, and just below that is the Navajo water access mission. It's a safe water storage program the importance of water disinfection tablets on your health. And this was produced by the Navajo Nation Division of Community Development. Um, and this document describes the purpose of the water disinfection tablets, uh, really how the tablets are used and an FAQ or frequently asked questions about the tablets and their use. And we've already had a couple questions uh, today. So th these are great resources. We also have the Navajo Safe Water, the free safe water and small containers. Uh, this is a document that describes containers provided and who's eligible for water fee coverage. Um, and then we have the guideline for hauling and transporting regulated water for human consumption um, produced by the Navajo Nation EPA. Um, it's a document that provides information about water collection point types and recommendations on water hauling container types and cleaning procedures. Um, information in the, bro in the brochure can be accessed by clicking on that link. Um, and so this, this is a great hub of information um, that's at your use, um, and we encourage the sharing and, and utilization of this. Um, so, so at this point, we're going to um, sag into kind of thinking about project service, about allocation. So I'll hand this over. All right, thanks, Gabe. Yeah, so I'm going to go over um, this a little bit about how the, the um, decisions are made about uh, the resources that have been uh, provided. Uh, and again, this this project was done with uh, IHS CARES Act dollars um, and uh, with collaboration with uh, the lead agency was the Navajo Nation Division of Community Development. So I'd like to recognize their, um, their helpful <coughs> work as, as well as the work of the um, Water Access Coordination Group which many members are on here today. I, I know about that. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, the, the project, we um, started off with having a, uh, a survey by the IHS and the Center for Disease Control of the 110 chapters, where we identified the status of regulated water points that are being regulated by the Navajo EPA. And these are what we call safe water points because the Navajo EPA ensures that uh, there's sampling and measurements of uh, harmful chemicals that uh, could be uh, causing health health issues in the in the water. Uh, so we determined that um, the 58 uh, chapters needed uh, a water point. So we, we installed uh, 58 transitional water points. And you'll see that type of water point is shown in the slide in the uh, picture in the lower left hand corner with the yellow bollards and, the, and some of the, uh, the signage that goes with that. Uh, 48 had existing permanent watering points. And those are could come in different kinds of sources. There's, there's one there with a, a truck that has a card reader perhaps with it. And then there's another one on the, on the right-hand side that's just an, an overhang uh, device. And so those are kind of termed existing permanent watering points. So both the, the services, the free, the, uh, free water <clears throat> and containers are available at both sites. Um, both, both, at both sites. Now, there were four chapters that decided not to participate uh, in the uh, <clears throat> in the intervention, so they've been left off. All right, you can go to the next slide. <clears throat> so the, these this slide summarizes the uh, uh, some of the key data that was utilized in in, in um, key assumptions that were utilized in determining the uh, the, uh, the the resources that are provided. So one is the number of homes without with no piped water access. Uh, that's primarily was from Indian Health Service data. Uh, the other was a uh, population uh, living in homes with no piped water. And we use US census data for that as well for around four people per home. And then uh, using that, we assumed that there's gonna be uh, one container, uh, one five gallon container provided uh, for uh, uh, hauling of uh, 
cooking and, and drinking water and i'll go into that, that why it's kind of i'm saying that precisely um that were that are they're, they're going to be provided and, and that would be you know, to people living in homes with no pipe water and a home with no pipe water also includes a cistern so a cistern uh, while it is some level of infrastructure it is not a pipe level of infrastructure it's not being uh, connected to a a water system uh so that though you know uh, individuals living in those homes would be eligible as well to, to to receive these containers uh then we made some assumptions around the amount of water that would be used about seven gallons per day uh, per person so um and that would be used for the purposes of drinking cooking and then and, and sanitation cleaning washing waste disposal and we've estimated that out for two years there needed to be a, a limit because the ihs cares act funds are limited and so we we, we um of the 10 million dollar allocation half of it was went to the navajo nation or a little bit over half of five million dollars and so uh, we we've uh, made budgeting uh as, as to budget as much as we could uh, on water after we uh, took care of all of the other uh, expenses that were associated with the delivery of the services um, and then again, we estimated the tablets of uh, one tablet uh, per person per week uh, for two years. And I'll go into a little bit more detail on that here in the next couple of slides on each of these as well. So we'll go to the next slide. <clears throat> so again, the Indian Health Service data um, was, uh, we looked at our data in, in April of 2020. Uh, we, we assessed the, uh, the number of homes that were without piped water based on unfinished construction projects. Uh, based on projects that were not funded, and also homes that we really didn't have a good indication, um, you know, were they weren't on projects, but they were you know, greater than 100 feet away from uh, a an, an Navajo Tribal Utility Authority water meter. Uh, we have um, the home data is in uh, the in uh, with the coordinates that can show where the home is, and we could determine that how far that was from a a court the uh, the location of a water meter. So we we did that. <clears throat> and um, you know, came up with around uh, 9,500 homes or so that that were that that was um, that came into this calculation. Now, many uh, questions have come in about like we need it. We need a map. We need a chapters need a map to distribute it. So again, there's uh, the 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 repository of this num the, this information is is the why the IHS has some information. Uh, really, uh, the chapters are the, 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 the focal point for where that information should be, and it should be shared with the IHS to make IHS's information better. Um, we, there's no, we, the IHS doesn't have any definitive lists or maps for the services to be delivered. We're trying to improve upon that in working with the, with the chapters. So, so we ask that the, you know, the chapters don't wait to deliver the services, don't be waiting for the, the, the list to go to knock on doors, you know, begin to do some outreach uh, uh, about the services that are available and begin to talk to people in your chapter and, and word of mouth about, you know, do they have relatives who, you know, don't have piped water access and, and do they know about the services that we have here? Uh, that should that, that should be the, the mode of operation. And, and the chapters, you know, should be uh, working with the IHS uh, uh, area district offices uh, to improve this data, uh, you know, basically through the, the 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 program delivery, you saw in the uh, in the video uh, where um, Braden Hickey was talking about a form saying where you're going to take the general the name and the number of people and and uh, with general location of the home. That information should be shared not necessarily with me at headquarters, but with the local IHS staff that they're going to help the, the chapters to develop projects for more permanent solutions. Uh, piped water solutions. So, so let me move on to the next slide. We will show you a picture of the data that we do have. That we do have maps now. That and and we're making we're we're working to make this data more accessible uh, to uh, chapters. We provided a paper map as an example of how this, the the services were estimated, but some of that information may not be accurate, and so we're looking for you to help to improve upon that. Uh, as and, and be in the driver's seat of uh, of defining the need so that uh, the IHS can assist the tribe in 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 um, in helping to, to address that. So there there is there is some data. This is the this is the data that was that was used. As dot the dots on the map represent um, homes that we assumed were without piped water, and you see the color coding there based on the chapter boundaries of the number of homes that were in each chapter that that corresponded to to the colors. Okay, the next slide. 
So I mentioned that the, you know, we took the number of homes and we had to determine the number of people because that the people are what use the water, the home doesn't. And so um, the, the, the Navajo home occupants in density of about 3.8. Uh, we developed this based on US Census data in, in, uh, in consultation with the Division of Community Development. And you'll see there's a little bit of simple math here, number of homes, uh, pipe water times, you know, number of homes, but pipe water times 3.8 is the number of people. So that's where we had this estimate of around 37,000 uh, people. Um, and, and you see that this is important because we use this number to, to determine the number of containers, the subsidized water volumes, and the, the number of water disinfection tablets that, that are provided by each chapter. So we had this, we had this all by chapter, and then we then began to utilize it as uh, the basis for everything else. All right. So the containers, so the water containers, uh, you know, one five gallon water container for each uh, uh, person living in the home. So the total people are the adults plus the children plus the infants. Those are the one gallon containers. And, and these containers, the, the important point in this slide is are intended to, to, to haul a small volume of water to be used for drinking and cooking um, for approximately one week. So more water is needed to promote health. So, you know, the, uh, the, tr the transitional water points, the permanent water points, you know, while people can fill up these five gallon containers and these water chlorination tablets are provided for that disinfection for that, that water in there, larger volumes are needed for promoting of cleaning and sanitation uh, in the home. And, and that's why we are showing uh, multiple size containers here. All of these types of containers uh, should be allowed to have access at the chapters for filling of water. And, and so that's what the important message are, you know, allow various, si various size containers to be filled. You know, they should uh, collect the homeowner data, like I just was mentioning, and share it with the IHS districts to help improve upon uh, the, uh, the, the, the information that the IHS has to develop projects to serve the homes uh, with better uh, facilities. And again, track the number of containers and the uh, distributed so that we can gauge the level of, um, so, uh, the level of impact of this project. And uh, we'll have some numbers about that later that shows where, we're, we, where we are in that. All right, next slide. So the, the water volumes. So there's been, we prepaid the water volumes about, I guess, $2 million worth has been set aside for water. And every chapter has its own allocation. You saw in the video some of the allocation amounts of gallons per month and per, per over the a two year period. That all equates to some dollar amount that uh, has been set aside uh, for each chapter. And we based it on um, uh, some uh, levels from the World Health Organization where, and we multiplied those times two. Uh, so uh, to, to, to give a factor of safety, basically, of the more water available. So we've assumed seven gallons per person per day. So the blue container has five gallons. So if we're assuming uh, that uh, you would use the blue container uh, would be used in less than one day for one person based on this estimate. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, if you had a, if you had a family of four, based on this estimate that they would come back every week and have to haul one of those containers that are in the bottom there. Now, those containers were not provided with the, uh, with the, with the project. And so uh, what we've asked is that if uh, chapters are seeing um, there's a demand for different size containers that they should just, you know, they can be communicating that to uh, NNDCD at, at Navajo Safe Water at NNDCD dot org and uh, the, the dc can collect up that information and then uh, perhaps we can identify resources to provide uh, some additional uh, containers um, to, to meet that need uh, we don't have any uh, information on that currently kind of like what the estimated demand would be for larger containers but um, if the information comes then the navajo uh, department of water Re uh, navajo division of community development could utilize that and share that information with the water access coordination group uh, that includes several federal agencies that may be able to um, uh, find some resources to address that need. But the, the main kind of takeaway is that more water is, is needed than, than these five gallon containers. Those five gallon containers are very, um, are used for a smaller quantity of water for just solely for drinking and cooking for, and then cleaning and, 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 and um, other things that water are used for to promote health in the home, you know, should be coming from other containers. All right, let's move on to the next slide. So the chlorine disinfection is, 
um, the, the uh, is is an important piece of this, and and we heard in this we heard in the presentation about uh, you know what the chlorine does, and the chlorine it it basically it kills disease causing agents in self held water. So you have this container, you know, we that 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 um, may not be cleaned. We, there's some recommendations on how to clean it, but we can't be assured that it's going to clean um, be cleaned um, uh, successfully. And that they the the chlorine that's a tablet will effectively boost the the level of of, of cleaning of the containers to ensure that um, you know there's no risk in consumption in consuming the water. And so you know what did we we what did the Indian Health Service do to to support this? Well, the IHS field team measured uh, chlorine levels uh, at every chapter, and we. Um, so there are chlorine that exist in the public water systems that each of these water points are connected to. And there are varying levels of chlorine that are for the for nearly all of them are within uh, regulatory standards of uh, that the Navajo EPA uh, would require. Uh, and if they and if we found lower levels, the, the Navajo uh, Department uh, Navajo Tribal Utility Authority took action to, to address the, that immediately. So so we had some uh, some some measurements of that. Uh, we did email those measurements to each chapter uh, earlier this month. So every chapter should have received an email from Navajo Safe Water at uh, nndcd.org with the results and and the recommendations of whether or not chlorine tablets should be provided or not. And so um, the tablets uh, we recommended tablets at about uh, nine at 91 chapters. And um, so we can roll forward now. So why are tablets important? And so here, here's here's some data about why, why they're important. So the, the rates of GI illness, so diarrheal illness uh, in, uh, in, on the Navajo area are 40% higher for not, not the GI hospitalizations are 40% higher compared to all other IHS areas. And then the rates of Navajo area GI outpatient visits when they just go in for a checkup and, and, and you know, come out are 50% higher when compared with all other IHS areas. And, and GI illness is a, is a water wash disease that is caused by disease causing agents that can be killed by chlorine. So um, th that's why we're recommending that, that it be added. And again, I mentioned here, there's no, uh, there's no uh, assurances that water hauling containers will be clean. So there's a, there's a, there's a, a buffer in there uh, for that. And then also the water, when you store water, the chlorine uh, tends to, it's volatile, means it can come out of the, the, the water and go into the air. And so it, and it, can, it can dissipate from the, from the uh, water over time uh, in the container and uh, as well as be used if there's some contaminants in there as well. As well. So on the right there, the photo is the is is the is the product. It's a product that's a aqua tabs. They're small. Uh, they're small. I got one some right here. There's small, small tablets that um, that are used. Inter the, this this product is used internationally. There's a it's a small tablet right there. It looks the size of a, a little bit larger than an aspirin. Uh, move forward. And we'll talk a little bit about how we assured some safety on this. In the next slide. Oh, is it, um, well, let me just arrive here, first of all, at the number the number of tablets and how we determine the number of tablets needed. So there's some math on this slide. Um, so we, you know, but I'll just let you know. So we use the number of people that piped water. We assume that that, that that's five gallon container would be filled uh, once a week. And then you got to put one tablet in it and you're going to do it for 52 weeks a year and you're going to do it for two weeks a year. And uh, so overall, so for the whole project, that's like 3.2 million doses of these tablets. And uh, we got plenty on hand um, because there is, uh, this is a new idea, having chlorine in your water and putting in, and hauling water with, with chlorine. So uh, that's why we're relying on the chapters to kind of try to convey this message and to tell and also tell us what, you know, where this message needs to be improved so that we, it can be understood better uh, the risks and benefits associated with this. This is again a voluntary um, uh, process. It, no one needs to have these tablets in their water. It's just uh, a uh, it's a recommended measure, recommended public health intervention. Let's move on to the next slide and show you. So this is the safety piece of this. So how how are these? Why are these safe? Well, one, 
uh, the chlorine levels are being monitored at the water point by the utility and you know by Navajo EPA is kind of like checking checking those out as well and they're being adjusted to ensure that they you know maintain compliance with safe drinking water act so there's there's already some chlorine in the water so and the same there was a question about like what what it, what's the ta what's the tablet made out of it's the same thing that's already in your water so you know chlorine it's not uh, anything uh, anything uh, um, exotic or different than you would find if you were connected to a piped water system um, <clears throat> but these tablets in order to sell these tablets in the united states they needed to be reviewed by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. So these tablets specifically were reviewed by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and they meet the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's um, uh, safety standards for, for sale in the United States. And this that action was explicitly taken for the Navajo Safe Water Project. So, um, you know, this was this is this is not something that that is has been um, done in the dark it's been something that's been done with full transparency and a lot of work um, actually we had assistance from the Navajo uh, water access coordination group uh, multiple members on there to get these tablets uh, to allow these tablets to be sold sold in the United States because they're they are, there's they're they're manufactured in in uh, in Ireland but to be sold in the United States and to be distributed for this project so it's been reviewed by quite a quite a, a, a lot of different organizations. Um, again, I, I talk about the uh, the IHS field team did assess the, again uh, the free chlorine levels at the water points, and also over time, uh, kind of how the tablet would would uh, would, di would dissipate. So if there was sufficient chlorine in the in, in the water point when we measured it, then we didn't need it. And so you know the re the, the values in the chlorine in, in the public distribution system could go up and down, and that 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 could change the change the need for that. Uh, but when the IHS was there, we measured it, and it was it. it uh, we've made some recommendations based upon that. All chapters were provided one-on-one -on -one training associated with the distribution of these. Now I know there's a lot of turnover in chapters, and 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 that's why we're having this training today. Um, and so you know, and there's a lot of resources out there. And and the, again, the CHRs are here. The uh, Southwest Water Research uh, uh, folks are there. The, the IHS dist uh, district. Um, folks are, are there. So we've got a lot of people to help the chapters to be able to understand the benefits and, and, and uh, of, of the situation of the, of the tablets. And one other group, uh, the John Hopkins University, uh, who's the couple of attendees are on the call today from, from that organization, they're going to be offering uh, Navajo chapters training uh, to, uh, to provide ongoing levels of chlorine assessment. So there's uh, strips for measuring chlorine um, that, that can be used. These are not the exact ones that will be used, but you could dip these strips in, in some water and measure it on the side of your container here and make the chap help the chap help the, for the chapters to help the residents to determine whether or not tablets are needed based upon the levels of chlorine that are in the in the piped water system. So that's coming down the pipe soon. All right, let's roll on for this now. Okay, so the one other issue with chlorine is that it uh, does add a taste and odor to it, and so we've been receiving some comments back about you know that, and uh, what can be done about that is is if you take you bring home your water, and in the blue container, you then take out a smaller volume of it, they you know in a small pitcher, and you leave that lightly covered so that you know no there's no uh, dust or f flies or mosquitoes getting in there. You could leave it in your refrigerator if you have one. And you know, for a couple of hours, that chlorine will come right out of there because it's going to volatilize and go into the air. If you put it in a tight container again, that won't happen. But if kind of a loose container, it will it will come up, and that will that will will take care of that. And there's some also public communication resources that are available that Gabe showed you on the website and the video as well. So great, yeah. And then so I saw a question here: Can you filter the water? Yes, if you had you know a a Brita pitcher. That will definitely take out the uh, the chlorine. Uh, the Brita picture will just zap it right out of there, um, and and uh, be that that that's the way to do it. That's how I consume my water in my house. I have a Brita filter, and it takes out the, the chlorine uh, level that way. Great. All right, let's move on to the next slide here. I think we're almost. I'm almost done my section. Let's see. I think you are done. Um, yeah. But there is a question in the chat box, um, mm -hmm. Marlene Montoya. Yeah, so let's uh, let's go through these questions. And um, so there's a the, the first question was just a clarification: Can 
all sizes of containers uh, be used. Um, and that was kind of going at your slide where there were multiple um, size containers. Uh, the question was at the beginning of the presentation, uh, I understood that other containers were not allowed or was that pertaining to the number of tablets? Okay, so that everyone, attention on deck. <laughs> All size containers can be used. All size containers can be used. Uh, we've had that, that message on uh, that slide there that I showed, showed all those different containers. The message on Gabe's slide had a, had a handout that showed all size containers being used. So, so while there are smaller containers that are for benefits for safe water hauling practices, the volume of water uh, needed exceeds the sizes of those containers. And so we, we definitely want to be allowing people without home, uh, piped water in their homes to be accessing the water. And you'll, you'll see right now, I'm gonna give away a little bit of Wilson's Thunder. We're only utilizing less than 25% of the estimated volume of, of water. And so it's uh, small, real, real small numbers. And so you know, we need to basically begin to, to promote the use of this and begin to, to look at, to, at ways in which we can, if there are additional barriers to hauling that volume of water to identify those to see if we can I try to try to help to address that. Okay, thank you. Um, there's another question uh, from A. Butler. Is there is there a list of individuals that can be contacted with the different chapters? Uh, well, I don't have a list of those. We have chapter email addresses um, that are available on the Navajo and SafeWater.org, and that's probably the best that we can offer um, that that way. Thank you. I see a questionnaire. Our chapter water is NTUA. Will that already be chlorinated? Yes. Uh, NTUA, all of the water points are connected to NTUA regulated systems and chlorine is placed in the, in the water to maintain so usually some type of residual is chlorine level uh, in, in the water that's in the distribution system. So the difference mm -hmm. is, is that when you take that water out of the distribution system and put it into another container, the, an, an individual, that's now uh, that the levels of chlorine may not be uh, high enough to ensure there's protection against the, the disease causing agents. And that's why we're putting this chlorine in there. And there's a question about the availability of filters at the watering point, David. Yeah, so I think someone said, you know, after I said that I use a Brita filter, can we get one of the projects? So yeah, we looked at that and it was gonna be a real, um, it was going to be a budget buster, basically. Um, so, so no, the answer is no. We can't can't provide that. It can be recommended that that's a way to, to go about that. Um, you know, others other ways in which you can do it are just leave it in the atmosphere and like let it kind of evaporate out naturally. It kind of comes out and and, and it will be, be taken care of that way. But uh, there's not um, there's not any uh, um, budget currently uh, to, to to begin to provide the filters for the water. And the other question, so five gallons a week with one tablet for each person that received water jugs, um, like it popped in the chat there, I think just confirmation around um, availability and, and one yeah. tablet for so, each person. So basically that was our calculation, how we determined it. But if someone shows up like twice in one week with their blue container, you just get, fill it up the container, you know, so you don't need to keep track of how many times uh, a person showed up with their blue container. You know, if they don't have larger containers to haul, they may be coming back more frequently because all they have is a five gallon container. So they should come back every day, basically, and fill our container. And so every day you come, you put a tablet in. So that's the, the calculation was based upon an assumption that people would have other means to haul water other than the five gallon containers. And they would be doing that. There's some instances that that's not the case. <laughs> And it's it's foreseeable it's it's reasonable that that's not the case because there are barriers to hauling water like you don't have the vehicle the right size or you don't have the containers and so such but but uh, the calculation was based upon an assumption one week but if someone comes back to the container uh, to the chapter and has a container as a blue container on Monday then they come back on Wednesday and then they come back on Friday with the content every time they they fill up their blue container a tablet should go in there okay. I have a and, question. Yep. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that um, 
the 55 gallon blue barrels are, are real common out here. And um, my question is how many tablets, if you have someone bringing a 55 gallon barrel, the blue plastic barrel that, um, like I said, it's real common. How many tablets, how many tablets for 55 gallon or is that allowed? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, if, if it's five gallons is one tablet, then uh, 55 gallons would be 11. All right. So the math, you can do the math right out there. And so, uh, you know, that's possible. And so uh, that we haven't provided guidance on that. So it wouldn't say that it's like, it would be like using a medication as an off-label use right now. If you're going to do it, you already had. So we haven't provided any training on that. Um, but it's foreseeable that that's, that would be okay. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not like you cannot do that. It's just that we haven't provided guidance on that in such, in, in such a way that the IHS can be assured that it's a consistent message and a practice. So, you know, and, and there may be, it's, it's not exactly five gallons to one tablet, it's a little bit more. So you maybe maybe four, maybe 10 tablets would be better than 11. So there, you know, but if there's some technical assistance like you want to provide and you had a, clean, a chlorine P, you could, you, could, you could try it out, you throw it in, five and you know and one tablet uh, ten and eight and one ten and one eleven one and then check out the you know the levels of uh, chlorine that are in there and we have some diagrams that can can like you know little decision trees on when you should you know recommend tablets and not that we can provide technical assistance providers uh, that are supporting this to, to help to gauge that so if that's of interest um, to some of the technical assistance providers that are on here we can felt that that was a little bit too much and and perhaps the work that John Hopkins is doing with the, the follow-up and the training piece can go into that and we can begin to figure out how we can get chlorine, larger, you know, chlorine into larger volumes of water. Um, but, uh, you know, as it to now, we kind of had to scale this thing up pretty quickly. So we went and said one tablet, one container and let it just let it go. Thank you. Uh, so I think last question before we say gone, uh, Priscilla asked who was responsible for filling water containers and adding tablets at these stations? Yeah, so the, the chapter is so the chapter officials have uh, has have agreed to the responsibility through the beneficial use agreements of open, having the, the water points open and accessible, uh, bringing out the hand washing stations that are associated with this, unlocking the stations, making sure the stations are together, overseeing that they they that they function, distributing the containers and providing the tablets. So chapter officials, that's why this this training is focused on chapter officials to understand their role. Of, 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 um, and to report that information. So all of these kind of obligations uh, in a partnership with the IHS are really on the chapter to, to follow up on. So, um, and again, we realize that there's some, a lot of turnover in chapters. Chapters are just kind of opening up again after being closed for many months. And so it may be confusing on who did the training when the IHS was there in the summertime last year. So that's why you know we have a network of support that we're building here through the CHRs, the Southwest Research um, uh, Institute folks, and the uh, the in uh, the IHS districts that can help to answer questions about the chapters. There's a lot of public publicity going on out there. There's, it's on the radio. It's in the it's in the Navajo Times. Um, there's this website. There's on Facebook. So you know we've gotten some feedback from some residents saying the chapter goes you know, go to the chapter and the chapter doesn't know what's going on. I heard it on the radio. And so, you know, so, you know, if you're feeling, if you're, if your residents in your chapter are feeling pent up like angst about this and you don't know what to do, you can, you can email Navajo Safe Water at nndcd.org. I feel like a telethon and, 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 and someone will follow up with you. Or you can call the CHR supervisor that you know, or the CHR that you know, or call your local IHS office and say, hey, what up? <clears throat> What's going on? So there's plenty of outreaches that the chapters can, can reach out to try to figure out. Um, what they need to do there to support this because there's a there's a large network there. Thank you. And one one last question I think popped in the chat from uh, CHR at Red Valley. Um, if you cover two chapters, both chap do both chapters get their own water containers? Yeah, each chapter was distributed a specific allotment based upon those the, the assumptions that I was of some of the containers, the containers, tablets. Uh, hand sanitizer. <clears throat> yep. And then, uh, and then a, so a question popped in from the Alberta Pueblo uh, Pintado chapter. Uh, so 300 gallons a month. Um, what it you know, looks like, what if we go over 
is the chapter responsible for covering overages? So Pueblo Pintado is a as a as a transitional water point. Is that right? I think I'm trying to remember. <clears throat> so, um, yes, okay. So the transitional water points and the billing is a little bit different on both because current currently the the um, the transitional water points are the, the bills are all currently in the name of neck of the NECA. And so all those bills are going to get paid in full until until the allocation runs out. Um, and so right now, people shouldn't worry about running out of anything really on this this water. So, you know, but that's that's in reality. Uh, so until it runs out and you'll the chapters will know it's running out because Wilson is tracking Wilson EA with Western Solutions. We're tracking from the NTUA water bills how much money is in there and what's going on. And we'll give you alerts probably six months in advance, three months in advance. And we'll, we're going to try to figure out how to, how to allocate the resources around this to balance it. So that if there's one chapter that's not utilizing anything and there's no, then it looks like they're, they're not going to be utilizing anything. We'll work with DCD to see if we can balance the funds in some way so that, so that chapters that are utilizing it can get, can get, can, can continue to do that. But uh, no, you don't have to pay overage. Now, in the chapters that have the transitional, the, um, the sorry, the existing permanent watering points. Yeah, I mean, so the bill is in the chapter's name or the, some entity's name already. And so what's happening there is there's a credit that's applied up to a set amount that's been calculated based upon the assumptions that I just ran through there. And that if the water bill is higher than that, then that water bill will be paid for by the, you know, it'll have to be paid for by the chapter. But even the, even those water points, there we, we have maybe one that's being overutilized and the rest are just not. So so there's really, the takeaway message should be is like, there's a, there's, there's a quite a bit of resources that have been parked for water fees and they're highly underutilized. And, uh, and people should begin to think about that and begin to help to promote that. Now that doesn't mean run out and tell everyone to water their cows and goats. Okay, so that's not the message that we're trying to send here. But we're trying to send is like that people who don't have access to pipe water in their home should know that this resource exists. It exists closer to their home. It's regulated and safe. And if there are barriers to people picking that water up from that spot, we need to know about them because we, the, the Indian Health Service and the, Navo, the Water Access Coordination Group has put a lot of effort into making these services available, make sure these services are available. And if there's just one other thing we need to do to get those things down the road, I'm pretty sure that we'll figure that out and figure out how to how to make that work. So so thanks thanks for that that question. And there's, there's another so another question. So is there a set amount the chapter is supposed to use per month? Kind no, there's no a... there's no set amount. We've assumed some 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 amounts based upon the the data I just described. Now, there are many reasons why that is some, that that estimate could be high. Maybe we don't know the number of piped, uh, homes that all pipe water in your in your chapter. Maybe we overestimated that. Now, I will point out that the IHS has estimated that 20% of the people don't have piped water and the Navajo Nation is saying 40. So, you know, there's some like something there going on there, but uh, but uh, but there's no set amount that you need to use. It's just the set amount that we've estimated. And there may be reasons why you're not the chapters aren't utilizing that. But what we're hearing is that there's been you know, a lack of access to the points, which is understandable because chapters have been closed. And 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 um, and maybe you know people are now just starting to come out to realize what you know, what, you know from the, from COVID to kind of to venture outside of their homes, and we would like them to begin to use safe water sources and begin to use them you know have, routinely, and uh, be, have them part, come part of their part of their part of their normal normal practice, and that's what we're all trying to do here. Uh, so what if, if a container, container gets damaged, uh, can a community member get another one? Yes, they can. And that's what that, that report you saw in the video. If there's a damaged container, let's bring it in. We have a year warranty. Where it's probably, we got at least until probably September, October this year before that warranty period runs out. So we can we can get some, get, get, a, get a replacement. Even the spigot, there's a, hang on a second. My, my props here. So even if this thing is damaged right here, if this this thing could this thing could damage and snap off. This is the spigot. If that's damaged, chapters are provided with extras of these. 
they should be able to hand them right out. And if they're damaged, we can also report them to the company and get and get a, get get some warranty on that as well. So this or this, you know, both of those things can we can yeah. we can do. And so so Justina asked. So what about people that don't have transportation? Is there anyone that can help deliver water yeah. to them? Yeah. So so the CHRs and Major Lane Begay had offered up uh, CHRs as a resource to do that. And so that, that's a very, um, that's, that's a great offer. And so I, I don't know if um, uh, the, the question came from a CHR or so came from the chapter, but but the, the first um, the request for that type of support should go to the CHRs. And then if they can't <clears throat> address that, then you should email um, NavajoSafeWater at nndcd.org and kind of say, hey, you know, ask the CHRs, they can help. And we still have residents that are needing that. So that we can, that the now the DCD can begin to get a picture of the, the size of that that type of problem, and then DCD can talk to the Indian Health Service. They can talk to the BIA. Can talk to HUD. Can, we can talk to every, we can talk to all the, the 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 federal partners that are on there to figure out kind of, hey, we got this problem. How can we all get together to help solve it? Thank you. Um, this is a word. We're having some good Q and A now. Uh, want to save some latter minutes. But mm -hmm. Candace asked, uh, you know, some people in 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 my community have running water, but it's not drinkable. Would they still qualify for a container? Yeah. So, so when you say they have running water, so if they're connected to a regulated piped water system, so if it's an NTUA system or another regulated utility, and it's undrinkable, they're you know. It could be because the chlorine level, they don't, it's, it's untasteful. It's kind of hard to tell what that specifically means, but no, they, they, they're not eligible. But if they're connected to uh, a private well, maybe, or a, or a, a spring source, uh, that's a unregulated source, then yes. So, so it's kind of, don't have a lot of information there about it, but if it's, if they're getting a bill in the mail from NTUA, the answer is no. If uh, they're connected to some type of other uh, water source that no one is billing them for, the answer is 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 yes. I'll go with that. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Justina. So at, at this point, we're going to turn it over to Wilson Yee. He's going to talk about chapter and service use reporting, and we'll have some time at the end too for some Q and A. Okay. Thanks, Gabe. Um, so as I mentioned at the beginning. Um, um, I'm Wilson Yee, I work for Weston Solutions, and we're assisting with this overall project in terms of uh, providing outreach. And um, so this the story map is one of the ways that we're outreaching and just providing information as a resource for um, users, as well as CHRs and chapter officials, uh, residents as well. And uh, the other part of it is, is um, that we're, we're actually outreaching and collecting information that um, chapters provide. So um, as Captain Harvey mentioned, um, one of the responsibilities of the chapters is to provide um, distribution data for water containers that are distributed and tablets that are distributed. And so that's done a couple of different ways as, as was mentioned in the, in the video. There's online and, and paper forms that are available. And um, we, walk, we can walk through them um, at the story map, I'll show you where that where you can do that. Um, in addition, if you don't have um, the forms filled out and, and they haven't been um, sent back to um, Navajo uh, Safe Water NNDCD.org. We actually outreach to the chapters directly, either via via phone or email, just to try to encourage that that reporting. Um, and you know, we report that out on a monthly basis in a monthly report, and um, I'll just jump right now to where you can um, actually uh, fill in, find, find the reporting forms. So here we're going back to NavajoSafeWater.org. And each of these, uh, these are a little uh, you know, table contents. You can jump right to this chapter reporting link here. And here you can see, if you click this link, you go right to the online form, which um, uh, Braden Hickey walked through. I'm not going to go through it, but just to show you how it works. Um, so you'd fill in just like um, Braden walked through in the video. Um, I'll just leave it there as well. We've got the, if, if for some reason you 
can't find the, the paper recording form, you can download it from the website here. So I just click that link and here we go. So you can just print that out, uh, fill it out and, and uh, scan it, email it back to um, uh, Navajo Safe Water at nndcd.org. Okay, going back to the presentation. So a um, couple of things that we've, we've found um, in three months of, of uh, reporting is that each month there's been consistency, consistently less than half of the chapters that have reported um, distribution data. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll walk through that specifically. There are also some chapters that have never uh, reported any, any data at all. And so um, I'll show in the next slide um, just starting with containers. Um, currently, we're at about 23.8% of total containers that have been distributed, and that's through March. So um, that's through last month. That's the most, most up-to-date data we have. And we are missing data from 12, 12 trap chapters, which is you know, about, um, you know, we're missing about 10% of, of the data. Um, so we got a, a ways to go. Um, in terms of uh, distributing containers. In terms of tablet distribution, we're about 2.37% distributed. And again, through March uh, 2021, here we've got no data from 11 chapters and um, 91 chapters have been provided tablets. So we have you know, a good sense of how much um, you know, has been distributed at each chapter, but we're still missing some data. And so there still needs to be some you know, effort to make sure that, um, that this information is provided to um, uh, Navajo Safe Water at nndcd.org so we can compile it and, and show the impacts of this project. So um, I before going through this summary, I'm going to share this um, Map. So part of the monthly reporting uh, uh, that we do is, is uh, pr uh, providing figures um, and, and showing on a chapter level at TWPs what the actual water usage is. And I'm zooming in here, it may be kind of hard to see, um, but you know, this is kind of an indication, gives you an indication of um, water usage overall. And looking at the, the uh, legend here, you'll see that um, we have different color codes for amount of water used. And we this this percentage is based on this, the actual use compared to our estimated use that uh, Captain Harvey walked through. So most that you'll just see just visually, most actually all of the uh, chapters that have TWPs are below 25% um, of our estimated use. So that, that shows basically this, this resource is being underutilized. And, and so the question that we received about, um, you know, is there a, a, a concern about, you know, using too much water? I, the clear answer is no, there needs, you know, there's more water available than is used. And, um, you know, on this table, we also have, I mean, on this figure, we also have a table showing each chapter and the transitional water points, the actual amount of water that's used monthly, um, give you a percentage of what that is in terms of, you know, comparing to estimated and, and rank it in, in terms of, you know, whether or not um, water is underutilized on target or overutilized and all of the TWPs are underutilized at this point. And this is again through March. So um, as I mentioned, all services are being underutilized is, is a takeaway here. Um, the water volumes that are used are significantly less than the World Health Organization recommendations. Um, there is a reduced risk of um, contaminated hauled water um, not, being not being realized because of this. So um, you know, I think the bottom line is, is we, we do have a, a clear picture. This is the same um, theme that we've seen, not just from March, but actually from the beginning. We, we started tracking this in July of 2020. 
and through March, um, all TWPs have been underutilized um, for this entire reporting period. And um, one other thing I would say is that, yeah, again, consistent chapter reporting is needed to track progress and, and to assess the impact of the program and to see whether or not we can you know, do things better. Um, so I guess before we move on, are there any questions about what I just went through here? Questions for Wilson. Um, and there's a couple questions in the chat. Um, um, is there a way of the a video of the water procedure um, so chapters can post them on their Facebook pages for the community? Oh, that's a good question. So the videos that are on the uh, NavoSafeWater.org webpage are actually linked out to a YouTube um, channel for NavoSafeWater.org. So yes, you can actually link to link that face your Facebook page to that YouTube video. So that's a way that you can distribute out those those videos. And our our. CHR is able to haul water to community members that don't have transportation. And that's a question from Berlinda. Yeah, that's what Majorlene Begay has the services that uh, she offered. So I would say, uh, you know, whoever is asking that question, I would, you know, ask your, you know, have your supervisor uh, confirm that with Majorlene that she's okay with that. But she's stated that um, in, in many meetings that I've been in with her. Thank you. And uh, a couple questions about, uh, so, in the Cameron area uh, relating to arsenic in the water um, and still have running water, but can't consume it. Yeah. Are they able to work with chapters specifically? Yeah, so so with Cameron, I, I would ask maybe, um, so I know that there is a, a new NTUA water point that's being installed there. And I don't know if that's connected to the piped water system that has the arsenic issues in it. So. I'd ask maybe if if someone would want to follow up with me directly, and I'll I'll type my my email into the thing here on that question. I will find that out because that's where the services are going to be supplied from, um, and then um, and then if there is uh, arsenic in that water, then we can try to look at alternative ways. I'll maybe um, to discuss this with DCD about where. Uh, residents of uh, that chapter may be able to go to another water point that is not con contaminated with arsenic to receive water. But, but we'd have to discuss that with uh, with the DCD and figure out kind of which chapter would like to volunteer that. We could we could augment this, the supply. So the short answer is not right now, if that's the case, but we can work on that one. So if I, I, I'll type my, uh, my, my, my email in here and if I have someone like to follow up with me on that, they can. Thank you, David. Uh, mm -hmm. Wilson, do you want to uh, continue sharing? Yeah, so I just want to wrap up here that, um, you know, if there are additional questions, um, there's uh, support resources available to you all. We've mentioned the uh, Navo Safe Water at nndcd.org email um, multiple times, but that's a, a good one of your best ways to get information, as well as um, IHS Navajo Area District Offices. Um, Mr. Jason Jansen is your main point of contact. Um, in, in case you don't know specifically who to ask um, uh, within the different divisions of Navajo area, uh, Jason Jansen's your, your, your main point of contact and his email and, and telephone are, are listed there. Um, and lastly, we have um, the community health representative CHR's um, central office contact is Ms. Majorlene Begay and her contact information is there. So these are all folks that are available to provide support and answer questions. Thank you, Wilson. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to share the, the chapter recommendations and then we'll sag into the, the comments and end with some Q and A. And we um, I believe we have some polls that are also available uh, through zoom. Is that correct, David? Well, <laughs> maybe not okay maybe not i think we're fine <laughs> we got I about think, yeah we're, we're running we're, on we're, time here we're running on time we can i can ask a couple of questions uh, verbally and it'll probably be easier yeah. yeah well i'll i'll share these so our, our recommendations for the chapters are 
Our insured water point services are open and available to residents uh, during all chapter operational hours. Um, promote service availability by utilizing all available methods, meetings, flyers, chapter websites, um, a lot of information that we shared here. Um, please report monthly water container and disinfection tablet distribution um, and kind of maintain those records. Uh, report any issues with water point operation or availability of containers or water disinfectant disinfection tablets to uh, Navajo Safe Water at nndcd.org. Um, and seek technical assistance uh, and support from IHS Navajo Area District Offices and your community health representatives or CHRs. Um, and so now to kind of uh, wrap us up, um, comments, um, um, questions, I think some popped in the chat. Um, so Chris, Chris had a great uh, follow-up comment um, in reference to um, anoxic contamination um, in, in the comments so iron and magne and magnesium mm -hmm. coloration. So I, I got, I have 10 questions here. We could, we could try to throw these up. Let's see, let's see how it works. I don't wanna, so if anyone, let's see our rules. So I don't know, I've just thrown up a, a, a poll thing and people could see it. Um, <clears throat> there's 10 questions in here because I didn't know how to run this poll. So it's like, I was gonna do one question at a time but it looks like if you put them here. So, um, <laughs> Do we have any raffle prizes for these questions? Yeah, no, there's no, no raffle prizes. Okay. Maybe Wilson can show his Lego picture and then, then he can maybe break out his guitar. Maybe there's something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone should see the, the questions in, in front of yeah. them. Uh, just a quick quick run through um, so, of what so we what shared. I, I, what I could do is just, um, you know, people can answer them if you like, uh, but I can just review them and while people look at them. Now, how's that? Yeah, maybe walk. let's walk through them, maybe yeah. pull them up. So can can is, can people see them? I don't know. Can t type in the chat if someone can see what we're looking at here. I, I see it on my end. You see it? Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so the, the first question is: uh, Who can access free of uh, water free of charge and water storage containers provided by the Navajo Safe Water Project? So that's that questionnaire, and. Um, Survey says. Survey says. Letter E, I think is that letter. So it's the uh, A and B. So the problem is, uh, here's, here's here's my problem. A and B. The A Bs are not shown on here, so you don't know which one's A and B. So when it was the first, <laughs> it's uh, people with uh, with cisterns at their home, yes, uh, and then people with no pipe water to their home, yes. People with pipe water in the NTUA system that's anoxic and stinking. <laughs> Probably not, unfortunately. Um, and people living outside the Navajo Nation is not. So the next one, um, what type of water points can can homeowners without pipe water access free water from? Well, this uh, there's transitional water points, there's PWPs, there's NTUA water points that are also part of the program. So the real answer here is all of the above, depending on the chapter. So the chapter uh, is is uh, depending on where you live. And if you go to Navajo Safe Water, uh, uh, dot org and look at the map, you can can get a good indication of that. All right, question three, what is the best source of information to find out location and operating hours of chapter of water, um, of chapter water points? Well, that is navajosafewater.org. It is in the Navajo Times. There's been ads there. There's been ads on Facebook. There's been ads on radio stations. But uh, the best place for finding out specific information is right there at that website. Um, okay. And then, which um, which point sources provide um, the, the which water point sources provide the safest water for human consumption? So. Uh, windmill wells, private wells, natural free flowing springs, all of the above. So the, the question is this one chapter or NTUA operated water points. And the reason is, is that there's some oversight of them. Now we've been talking a little bit about maybe some what are called secondary contaminant issues that, that are, you know, make the water impalatable. And, you know, that's also a concern because it maybe forces people to drink from unsafe sources. But, um, but hopefully those, that, that those situations are, 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 are few and far between, and hopefully you're working on 
those with the IHS to try to uh, address that. All right, how many chapters available in? Okay, the answer is 106 because there were four chapters that decided not to not to participate. The 110, there are four chapters. Uh, one that we didn't have any record of any. Uh, all the homes and had piped water. There's a, a couple of chapters that didn't felt they didn't want to participate. So it's actually 106. All right, what are the benefits associated with using water supplied to the Navajo Safe Water Project? Okay. Uh, no charge for uh, water collected for in-home use. That's correct. Routinely monitored to sure meet federal water quality standards. That's correct. Uh, better taste. I don't know. That's debatable. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. Shorter driving distances. Yes. So you know, you could say depending on your your perceptions, maybe the A, B, C, and D is is correct, or maybe just A, B, and D is correct. There's no right answer on that one. Uh, what is required to receive free water? No, all of the above is not required. What is required is just given some information right there. You don't need a home site lease. There is no home site lease required. You don't need to show an ID card. Um, you just need to say that I don't have piped water in my home. The chapter um, will take a record of where your home is. They'll ask them where your home is so that they can help IHS to provide you with some, the, provide the homeowner with some more services. And, and um, you know, how many people are living there and kind of a general location. So again, no so, no home site leases. There's a, there's a question about which chapters are participating. Uh, yeah, it's in the notes section, Shanto, Tuba City, uh, oh. Cove, and the Right. Those are the four. Thank you. How can chapters identify homes with no piped water service? Uh, um, to provide to provide services. How can chapters identify homes with no pipe water to provide services? Yeah, it's all of the above. It can promote the availability of the water containers on the chapter website, announce availability during chapter meetings, ask the CHRs to spread the word, you know, ask the IHS to provide available data on homes without pipe water. Again, what size containers? There it is, all of the above. Whatever you can haul. It doesn't break your truck. <laughs> And uh, okay, last question. Who, yeah, last question. Who um, should the chapter notify if there is no demand? So, if you don't have any services, if there's no demand, the real people you should notify is Navajo uh, DCD. Okay, that's the one right there. DCD should be the people that's the kind of point, center point of this. So, if there's we had one question is like people just aren't coming. All right, if they're not coming, just let DCD know, and then you know, we can maybe we there are chapters where they are coming. And there is a need that we can re, we can reallocate those resources. And so, you know, it's, IHS, if you notify IHS, not a bad thing. We'll, we'll figure that we'll figure that out as well. But the real point per people here are going to be the Navajo D Division of Community Development. And you can get to them through Navajo Safe Water at nndcd.gov.org. Sorry. So that's what we get there for that. Ten, you can only um, you only get 10 poll questions for some reason. Well, thank you, David. Uh, Priscilla has yeah. a question mm -hmm. uh, about you know, mentioned the water warriors have been helping a lot of communities. Do we still need to add tablets into their five gallon containers when helping water warriors in the field? Yeah, I mean, you could, I mean, if the chapter, Priscilla, I'm assuming that she's works with a chapter, uh, you could talk to the water warriors about that. Um, and you could, if it's a five gallon container, the water warriors say has five gallons, then you could put, probably put that in there. Yeah. You can just talk to them about that. All right. Um, do, we, do we have to? Do you have to be registered with a chapter to qualify? Yeah, we don't. We, IHS did not establish any uh, eligibility requirements other than the chapter. You know, uh, basically believes that that person doesn't have pipe water, so it's up to the chapter if they need to establish. They want to establish some some sort of requirements on that. Um, <clears throat> We did, and I just did not explicitly say that you need to be a resident in that chapter to receive services from that chapter. Um, it's kind of explicitly understood that that would be the way it would roll. But, you know, in some cases, some of the, the roads uh, allow people to access places, yeah, other chapters easier than the, the, the chapter house and their chapter. And so, you know, as long as in, that, in those cases, it may be best for both chapters to talk to each other about that. Um, that would be my recommendation, but the IHS has not recommended, um, has not restricted that in any way. Great, thank you. 
Um, so we're we're right about at time. Is was there any? Um, I know Wilson was going to walk through his uh, this amazing website, but any, any more questions? Nah, like I think we're good. I, I think we're I good with that. I really want to. Can I quickly just show people just because there are questions yeah. about participating, not participating, and where the water points are? This um, interactive map at um, NavajoSafeWater.org is is available. You click the Find Safe Water uh, link. It brings you here. Wait for it to load up, but um, Basically, here's where you can click on any one of these uh, permanent water points or transitional water points and get uh, hours of operation. And this, just wanted to kind of leave you all with that, that this is available and, and uh, should be um, easily accessible. Yeah, and, and there's also there about whether or not the storage containers are available and whether or not they need to pay for water. So the idea is that if storage containers were fully given out, We'll update this information and say there's none left here, <clears throat> but um, we're not having that problem really right yet. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you want to talk about the alerts, Wilson, since we've got people here. here. Since, since yeah. we're here. Um, yeah, so there's, there's um, you can basically sign up for alerts. That's one of the, uh, um, whoops, I went too far. Um, if you go to the findsafewater.org, um, link again. Um, it'll actually pop you right to um, this button, which allows you to sign up for alerts. And then you can sign up for either email or text alerts. Um, it's a pretty self explanatory, um, uh, basically, form. You got to fill out which chapters you are interested in getting alerts about um, and how would you like to receive them, either email or SMS, text message, or both. And then just go ahead and fill this out. And if you have any questions about this, of course, you can email uh, NavajoSafeWater.org um, at nndcd.org if you have questions. Um, and again, you can uh, find contacts by hitting this contact link and you know it'll basically pre-populate an email um, for you with that address. I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Wilson. Well, I think on that note, we've uh, we've covered a lot of information and shared a lot of material. Um, please follow up uh, Navo Safe Water at NNDCD. Uh, David has also left his email in the chat here. Um, please check out the website, NavajoSafeWater.org. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, David and Wilson, do you want to close with any words? David? Uh, no, thank you. I see someone from Nahatzil is asking to add the <clears throat> the water point um, on the on the uh, oh, yeah. on the map. I mean, so we could consider doing that, but since there's no services, the, the fees will be none. So we could we could do that. We'll take that as an action item uh, and add that there, Wilson. Probably, you know, back. There's yeah, one there. I was, I'm assuming. I mean, we'll we'll probably have to get in touch with with uh, with you there because I don't want to make sure like which uh, water point you want to point to, because there is a transitional water point installed there. Is that the one you want to direct people to, or is it a different one? I'm not I'm not sure about that. So I'll probably have to. You know. And direct all questions to the the Navajo Safe Water and David. Would that be you too as well? Yeah, I mean, if they want to try to come to me, I may be overwhelmed sometime. But we, the Navajo Safe Water at nndcd.org comes in and there's multiple people monitoring that. Jason Jansen, um, oh yeah, dot, dot go, it'll never, never, never get to me. Good, that's a good one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, follow that email. Uh, so it'd be, um, there's other people monitoring that other website that you may get faster action if you email there. But uh, if you feel you like to email me directly, uh, then then you have that. It, that address as well that's uh that was a, a hidden reference because it looks like you're trying to go and yeah we got, none of these meetings ever uh you know, <laughs> ever end on time and um thank thank you again everybody for joining and uh and happy earth day thank you ashley and, and candace and, and tanya and thank you everybody for joining and uh um we'll all right and we'll make again. we'll make this re recording available um on the uh uh, NavajoSafeWater.org website probably maybe, maybe take us a, a week or so to get get it all packaged up, but get it over there. 
and the PowerPoint with all the data will also be available yep. and the videos and all of the flyers and other publications. Uh, so thank you, everybody. That's uh, right. Take good care. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.